way, because many times when we do Red Church, people are using this as their church. We get contacted quite often. People are talking with us about it. And, you know, I, I found it really interesting that we began to do this kind of the, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, by the word of the Lord. And then suddenly people really began to use this as their church. And so we feel a responsibility. And by we, I am joined today with Allison and Heather. Hello. Hello. It's my daughter over there, our daughter, and yes. my wife, Heather. Yeah, our daughter. <laughs> I might have something to do with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were there. Yeah, I was You were there. there. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wanted to say this to everybody, you know, let me look right back at you. Um, we're going to get into some awesome stuff today, and I think it's going to really help you as we start to walk into it. But if you would, would you please repost this, share this with somebody? Because people are contacting us about Red Church. We have people tithing here regularly, beginning to join us um, on Sunday morning like this. And we're just so grateful to those of you that do that. And many times people view this just as their church because it's helping. Some people are in rural communities where it's very difficult for them to go to a church or attend one physically. And some people just choose to be with us anyway, regardless of where they live. So we're grateful for that. We're here for you. And we want to continue to make that available. And if you want to become a giver, a tither to Red Church, you could go to josephz.com, hit the drop down menu, and there you can go ahead and see Red Church archives or tithe, give, become a supporter, join our partnership family, and we can go after what God's called us to do. But all that being said, I want to get into the Word of God today. That's why we do this. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is We do true. Red Church, mm -hmm. not because, you know, every week we, well, I'll say it better. Every week we talk about all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Prophecy Live, yes. we get into conspiracy-based stuff, but we always land with the Word of God. That's right. Um, we get into full disclosure where we talk about really intense topics that are going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, we do also the... Um, no Limits Forum, yes. which is really great. Mm -hmm. No Limits is fun. Those are always fun. They're always fun. Whoever we have on or however they it goes. They always have such a good time. It's always a party. <laughs> Laughter, fun, fun yep. topics. It's great. We really enjoy it. But Red Church, people ask, what does Red Church mean? Well, Red Church really means the blood of the Lamb. And we, we use the verse Revelation 12, 11, mm -hmm. which says they overcame the evil one mm -hmm. by the blood of the Lamb going red, the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives even unto the death. And so it's, it's kind of intense and strong, but it's just the way it is. Yeah. This is the days that I believe the red church is necessary. Mm -hmm. They overcame him, the evil one, by the blood. This is the red part mm -hmm. of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony, you know, nobody can talk you out of your testimony. That's right. Because it happened to you. That's right. And then you have this thing where you love not your life even unto the death. Do you remember that movie called First Night? Yeah, I do. Remember it was, uh, who was it? It was... It was uh, Richard Gere and who was the Nicole other? Life. What's that? No. Nope. No, no, no. Oh, it was Richard, Richard Gere, Gere and, and Sean Connery. Yes. He was their king. Yes. <laughs> the law will judge you or whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. so he's there and he's, he's talking to Richard Gere, but Richard Gere was this awesome swordsman. Mm -hmm. And he was Lancelot in the movie, Lancelot. And there was a part where they said, how are you so good? How did you do that? He's like, well, lots and lots of practice. And you have to be able to do this, do that. You got to be fearless. Mm -hmm. They said, but how do you do what you do? And he said, oh, one more thing. You can't care whether you live or die. Mm. I thought that's interesting. Yeah. So the scripture says they love not their lives even unto the death. There's something about those who would let go of their life yes. will gain it. Yeah. That's part of the red church. Yes. They overcame by the blood of the lamb. What this means here, the blood. It's just the red church. Mm -hmm. It literally means all the covenant blessings that Jesus gave us upon his death and resurrection. Yes. So when we say going red, we're talking about not only do we have fire insurance from hell, mm -hmm. we have everything the blood provided, mm -hmm. That's right. healing, wholeness, to do well, to have economic increase, to yeah. do what God called us to do, yeah. to really step into the fullness of what he has, good relationships, soundness of mind, mm -hmm. endurance, all those things, De deliverance, the power of God to cast out demons, all of it. But that all comes through the blood of Jesus. So when we say going red, we're talking about all of it yep. in one, the covenant of God yes. with us. Going red. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're talking about. But one of the things I want to get into today for Red Church, mm -hmm. I want to talk and kind of, um, there's a, a trend going on in the world right now, mm -hmm. um, a trend that is a perversion of a great Bible truth, mm -hmm. a great Bible truth. 
you see it um, in good areas where people say, I'm believing for something. I'm going down avenues where I want to achieve something God called me to do. But then there's this idea where people visualize. And now I'm going to really work with this in a healthy way today because yeah. there's, there's good and bad to this. But when people begin to visualize and try to manifest something mm -hmm. out of the universe, so to speak, mm -hmm. I really believe that is demonic. Yeah. Yep. It's a demonic action. But there's something else the Bible talks about, which I'll get into in a moment called the law of the mind. Mm -hmm. And that's different than visual, visualization. But whatever you meditate on, whatever you're thinking about, whatever you're continuously looking at, mm -hmm. there's something that's going to be like an incubator and it will create that. We're made in the image and likeness of God as believers. That's mm -hmm. right. And God spoke into darkness, there was light. Mm -hmm. But whatever you begin to imagine or think about, mm -hmm. it begins to germinate. It yeah. begins to create especially when you focus on something so hard like if you want um i know for me like as when i was a little kid i was like lord i really want a horse yeah i want a horse so bad true and, and yeah. it got to such a point where i was constantly yeah. meditating on thinking about a horse yeah. what it would be like to ride on a horse <laughs> i would constantly be seeing these pictures mm -hmm. of a horse and it got to a point where i finally was able to ride a horse yeah it was provided that i was able to ride a horse and so but that can also go the other way yeah. when people crave relationships and they constantly like imagine themselves like I want to be with someone like I want to have a, a relationship with someone. Yep. They could end up attracting the wrong person just simply out of it's true focusing on the wrong or or Ali to your point, which is such a good point. You can begin to meditate on things or visualize to mm -hmm. use the worldly term, yeah. which I don't agree with, but you can yes. visualize something until you manifest it, mm -hmm. but it's really idolatry. Wow. It's really a form of you um, using the gifts and the mechanisms God put inside you to mm -hmm. do it. Now, there's something called vision boarding, yes, which I think is really healthy yeah. if and only if mm -hmm. it's through a biblical lens. Yes. Okay? You got to stay inside the scope of the Bible. Yes. You can only look for things in the Bible Absolutely. and whatever the promises of God are, mm -hmm. God wants to back that up. And he's looking for someone to agree with them in their thoughts, in their words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can't start visualizing to manifest things mm -hmm. outside the scope of scripture yes. or in a, um, you know, it says in James, um, you do not have because you do not ask. That's what James mm -hmm. says. But when you ask, you do not receive is what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can find this. Oh um, yeah, is that, that sounds a lot like. It's James. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is James. Yep. It's James but, 4 and verse 3. Let's put it on the board. Okay, cool. James chapter 4, verse 3. It's important. Mm -hmm. James chapter 4, verse 3. But when you're looking at this and you begin to understand it, it's talking about you ask and do not receive. Let's go back to verse 2 real quick. It says, you lust and do not have. Now, this is important. Mm -hmm. Lusting is not always, you know, the connotation is that it's a sexual thing, yes. but it's not. I mean, yeah. that's part of it, definitely. Yeah. But it just means an intense, insatiable desire outside the bounds of God. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So it's talking about you lust and do not have. And it says you murder, you covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. You do not ask. Does that tie in the scripture when the Lord says, ask and you shall receive? Yep. Seek and you shall find. Yes. Knock but Jesus and the door said, will be open. That's right. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, basically, if you're doing my will, you're walking in my plan, you're doing the stuff, it says, ask in my name, ask anything in my name mm -hmm. and it will be done for you. But notice mm -hmm. it's in his name. Mm -hmm. You can't take his name in vain. In other yeah. words, you can't walk in his name in vanity. You can't imagine a vain thing mm -hmm. and ask for it or... Yeah try to visualize it and manifest it. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's new agey stuff. That's all that junk. But mm -hmm. there's a healthy version of this mm -hmm. that I believe people cast out and they don't realize the Bible wants you to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it says, think on whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, dwell on, meditate, mm -hmm. visualize these things. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's important. That's, that's out of Philippians. So when you're looking at this, it says though, people want, they want, they want, they want, they want. And they don't realize that they should ask, but sometimes in that asking, mm -hmm. there's a misappropriated desire attached to that asking. Mm -hmm. So it says, you do not have because you do not ask. So the mechanism is to go to God, seek first the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. his righteousness, all these things be added unto you. Mm -hmm. But it says you ask, let's go to verse three now. So some people go ahead and ask, 
But then it says, some people do ask, but they do not receive mm-hmm. because they ask amiss. Mm-hmm. Or you wow. could say they ask wrongly. Mm-hmm. That you may spend it, notice this, yes. on your pleasures. Wow. In other words, you're not, you're not uh, asking properly. You're not in right alignment with the word of God. You're outside the scope of what God says. Now, let me give you verse four, which brings even more clarity to it. Mm-hmm. Adulterers and adulteresses. But he's not just talking about like being unfaithful in marriage, which is absolutely wickedness. Yeah. But it's talking about adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world or the cosmos, the system of the public mm-hmm. is enmity with God. Mm-hmm. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So that's coupled together with asking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're asking properly, it's inside the scope of what God provides. Yeah. If you ask outside that scope, it's a miss. You're not in line with his will. Therefore, you're being friendship with the world. You want and crave what the world has. Yeah. Matthew chapter six is seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But before that, it says, do not worry about your life. Don't worry about what you eat, what you're going to wear, what you're going to do. It's after these things that the Gentiles seek. That's friendship with the world, desiring the things outside of the scope of what God has provided. I see. So what do we do then? Because there's a visualization thing. People say, I'm visualizing. (laughs) I'm laying here on the floor. I'm just visualizing this and visualizing that. (laughs) Here's the problem with it. There is a mechanism God gave you, but it can get uh, hijacked demonically. You can begin to see bad things happening Mm -hmm. because people begin to visualize. They run down the wrong avenue. Mm -hmm. The Lord doesn't want us to visualize things outside Mm -hmm. his scope, but there is a place out of Rome. Let me go go here. I'm going to get a running start to this next part. Okay, let's go to Romans chapter four real quick. (laughs) Romans chapter four. Hallelujah. This is important. I want to just look right at it in the Word of God here. Romans chapter 4, very important scripture. I want you to see something. This is part of where I'm going, and this is important. This is going to help people. It'll give you the scope by which you can function. It'll begin to cause you to to really operate the way God wants you to. Romans chapter 4, let's look at this here. I'm going to get a running start in verse 16. Romans 4, verse 16. Let's put that on the board. Verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace. Notice that again, by grace we are saved through faith. We also realize scripture later teaches us that as you received him or in the same way you received him, which is by grace through faith, it says, so walk in him. Mm -hmm. That means everything we do as a believer is by the grace of God, what he's provided everything, but by faith, we appropriate what he's provided. Okay, going red. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promises might, or the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Verse 17, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who calls or gives life to the dead. Now, hold on now. So it's saying, I've made you father of many nations in the presence of him who, whom he believed. In other words, preemptively to something, you got to believe. Abraham believed because the Lord said to him, get this, yeah. Abraham couldn't have kids. Yeah. Or he, he could, he's just, they were older. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Time was going on. And the Lord said to Abraham, Abraham, come out here, come outside. Look up, look at the stars. Mm-hmm. As many stars as you can see. See. Oh, see. See, that is how much your generations and your legacy will be. Mm-hmm. He was saying, Abraham, don't, don't, don't look at all this other stuff. Don't look at your age. Look at the stars. Visualize, mm-hmm. right? Wow. Now, this is not ungodly vis- visualization. This is him looking to the heavens. Mm-hmm. He's looking up there. And why is he looking up there? Because God is saying, I need you to get an image. I need you to get something that you can meditate on, something that you can yes. look at. Look at the stars. And then Abraham's like, look at the stars. Those are my kids. And the Lord was saying, those are like your kids. That's how many you're going to have. He said, now look at the sand. Look at the sand. As much as the sand covers the sea or the beaches or the ocean or the earth, 
so shall your generations be. Wow. Now Abraham had something to meditate on, to think about, to visualize, mm -hmm. but it wasn't outside the scope of God's law. It wasn't outside the scope of God's commands. It mm -hmm. was inside the scope. So now Abraham could apply faith to that because the word of God had been spoken to him yep. and Abraham could believe it. Mm -hmm. That would be, he could even line up then and you could say, Abraham could say, Lord, now I ask you for this because it's inside that scope. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense, right? But notice he's saying this about Abraham. I've made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed God. Now this is talking about when he was going to offer up Isaac. Wow. Right? He said, sacrifice your son. Yeah. And by the way, Isaac was like 30, mm -hmm. yeah. 30 years old. Mm -hmm. He wasn't like, okay, dad. No, he's like, okay, let's go. Yep. I'll carry the sticks and I'll tie myself up, whatever. Yeah. And uh, Abraham went to go sacrifice him. And this mm -hmm. is kind of fun. It was on the mountains of Moriah that that happened. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, Heather, I mean, it's pretty strong. Yeah. He was on the mountains of Moriah. Yes, mm -hmm. it was. It's very strong. He's on the mountains of Moriah, and he says to Abraham, Abraham was there and God's with him, mm -hmm. sacrifice your son to me. Mm -hmm. Abraham bundles him up, lays him down, 30-year-old son. And he goes to do it, God stops him, the angel stops him. Mm -hmm. So awesome that hundreds of years later, yes. on that same mountain range, yes. oh, this gets uh. me going. <laughs> Another father said, since you were willing to obey me, I'm going to up the ante on this covenant. Mm -hmm. And that's what covenant does. Mm -hmm. It says, I'll take what you did, but I'm going to up the ante. I'll yeah. make, I'll follow through. Yeah. God, the father brought Jesus, the son to the mountains of Moriah. Mm -hmm. And that's where he was crucified wow. where Abraham was going to sacrifice his own son. Mm -hmm. It was a type and a shadow and a promise. Abraham was willing to do it. And the Lord said, stop, since you're willing, I will do it. Powerful. Mm -hmm. But look at this in that yes. Abraham was so full of faith in God that when he took Isaac up to the altar, mm -hmm. this is what it's talking about in the presence of him. Because he had the promise. Remember the sand, the sea, or yeah. the, the, the stars? And the son must have known something about that too. Oh, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. To be just as equally yeah. uh, a revelatory, not just revelatory, but a revelation in heart. That's right. To have the same. That's right. The same understanding of the promise. The promise. Mm -hmm. So good, Heather. It's almost as if he didn't love his life unto the death. <laughs> yes. That's what it was. So Abraham now has a visualization mm -hmm. or a faith picture We'll use that word, not these worldly terms. Mm -hmm. He has a faith image yeah. of the stars mm -hmm. and the sand. Yes. With that image, he goes here and here's the words. I've made you a father of many nations because he's visualizing through faith, mm -hmm. the stars and the sand yes. mm -hmm. in the presence of him whom he believed. What did Abraham do? He believed yeah. God. Yeah. Notice what it says then. Who gives life to the dead. Why does it say that? It said that because Abraham knew even if I kill Isaac, yep. God will bring him back to life. Yep. It's because the stars and the sand. Yep. I saw it. He showed me I'm going to have a legacy. You said. Yep. And so Abraham so had that in his mechanism. Abraham was considered righteous mm -hmm. because he believed God. That's what Galatians says. Yeah. He believed God. Therefore, it was accounted to him as righteousness. That's yeah. strong. Yeah. So because he said, God, I believe you about the stars. That's my legacy. That's how many kids I'm going to have. I believe you about the sand. That's my legacy. That's how many kids you're going to have. And although it doesn't look like I'm going to have any of this stuff in the natural. And now you're telling me to wipe out my own lineage yes. unto you. Mm -hmm. I still believe you. Yeah. And that action, God's like, oh, <laughs> wait a second. Hold up. So I've made you a promise. Mm -hmm. I'm on purpose violating, it would seem, mm -hmm. not actually violating, but it would seem that I'm violating what I said to you because I told you this will be your heir. You're going to do this. And now I'm telling you to wipe him out. Mm. And Abraham's like, that's Ooh. fine, God. Do it. Because yeah. <laughs> you told me the stars and the sand, and I am fully persuaded. And the Lord's like, yes. you're righteous. Yes. 
You believe me that much? I counted unto you as righteousness. You're a righteous man, Abraham. You put your word above my word. Yes. You put what I said and you put it in your heart. You're fully persuaded yes. over what you think. Yes. You're fully persuaded in what I said. So that's what he's saying here. In the presence of him who he believed, God who gives life to the dead. Here, and watch this. Are you ready? We're going to get into how it applies to you and I. And this is God who calls those things which do not exist, do not exist mm -hmm. as though they did. What? I mean, come on. God, who calls those things that do not exist as though they did. Now, we're made in God's image and likeness. Mm -hmm. God, in the beginning, I believe, stepped into the void. Yep. <sighs> Cleared mechanism, clean room. Mm -hmm. walks in there and he's like looking around and God didn't look into the darkness and go, whoo, it's dark out here. He didn't do that. Yeah. God didn't call it what it was. That's right. God stepped into the darkness and said, light be. And light's like, here we are. <laughs> here I am. Cause light had to manifest. Mm -hmm. God stepped into darkness like the Rich Mullins song, right? Yeah. He stepped into the darkness and created the light. Our God is an awesome God. Yes. I forgot about that song. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> that's, that's the image I get. So he does that. He, he walks into darkness, looks around, and God doesn't say, what do we got here? Oh, it's dark. Mm -hmm. It's dark out here. What are we going to do? God didn't do that. Mm -mm. He walked no. into darkness and said, light. Yes. And it was the opposite of what existed. Mm -hmm. He called that which was not in existence as though it did. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've, I've talked about this before, but when I come home yes. and I'm looking for you, <laughs> Heather, yes, <laughs> and I don't see you, yes. I'm looking around, look that way, look that way, look around the house. Sometimes I'll be like, Heather, Heather, mm -hmm. what am I doing? I'm calling mm -hmm. what I don't see. Yeah. And if I call long enough, <laughs> usually... She shows up. Yeah. It's amazing. You call those things which you don't see or which are not mm -hmm. as though they were. Heather, if you call something in faith, it'll show up. Mm -hmm. So this is the interesting thing. Calls those things which do not exist mm -hmm. as though they did. Now, mm -hmm. now I want to get into Romans chapter 7. Yes. Romans chapter 7. Let's go over here. Yes, let's do that. Romans chapter 7. And you say, okay, well, what does this have to do with anything? Where are you going with this? I really want you to pay close attention to this. You're going to get something out of this if you'll roll with me. Oh, yeah. Romans chapter 7. I remember I was with uh, Andrew, Andrew Womack, and I started breaking this down. And he said, Joseph, teach this to me. I, I didn't, I, I was taken back by that. I mean, Andrew's like, knows everything. <laughs> just, I would not pretend he, to. Yeah, he knows some but he, stuff. But <laughs> he, he enjoyed this. He like said, a, that's really an good. an understatement. <laughs> yeah, I was really blessed Smith by that. that way. Oh, he's the best. Yeah. But I was very humble by that. But I, I believe that there's something to this. And many people might know this. They might not. But mm -hmm. I found this very helpful. Yeah. So we're in Romans chapter 7. Mm -hmm. And let's just get a running start. I like getting a long running start at things, but let's take a look at this. Romans chapter 7, let's start out at verse 18. Romans 7, 18, getting a running start. It's talking about Paul, and he's saying, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh. Mm -hmm. Now, the flesh is a mindset, not just your corporeal body here. Mm -hmm. It's a mindset that goes against the Word of God. It's a way of thinking that's yep. contrary to the Word of God. That's the flesh. Yeah. Galatians 5.16 says, if you walk in the spirit, you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh, flesh. or a way of thinking right. that goes against the word of God. When you walk in the spirit, John 6.63, he said, my words are spirit and they are life. When you walk in that, you're opposing the flesh. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 8, it says that um, the flesh and the spirit war against one another. Yeah. But when you're walking in the spirit, you will condemn the works of the flesh, the law of the flesh, all that. But look, I know that is in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells for to will is present within me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find in the flesh, okay? Mm -hmm. He's saying, I don't do good in the flesh. Verse 19, for the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do that I practice. This mm -hmm. is Paul talking, verse 20. 
For if I do what I will not to do, this it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Okay, sin. Wow. Verse 21. I find then a law, a law that evil is present within me, or with me, not within me, with me. Mm -hmm. The one who wills to do good. Mm -hmm. Verse 22. For I delight in the law of God, according to the inward man, or you could say the spirit. Verse 23. But I see another law in my members. Mm -hmm. Warring. Pay very close attention. This is where we're landing right now. Yes. Against the law of my mind. Let's, let's say this together. The law, the law of, of my, my mind. mind. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. But notice this. He's talking about all these things. So you got like the law of sin, you got the flesh, you got the spirit, you got this warfare going on. But he said, there's a war that comes against the law of the mind. Mm -hmm. There's a lot you can say about this. Mm -hmm. The law of the mind is a gateway. It's a valve. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of things. Mm -hmm. One of the functions of the law of the mind is whatever you think about, mm -hmm. there's a law that it begins to create. If you meditate on something long enough, it'll start to create it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't really do any tasks without thinking about it as you're doing it or before you do it. That's the law of the mind. Right. If you meditate on something, you can imagine, you can invent things. Mm -hmm. If you meditate long enough on a thing, you can actually cause it to start to want to manifest in your life because you're going to meet it. It's, it, we have this creative potential in us like the Lord Jesus, like God, yeah. because we're created in his image. Mm -hmm. However, the perversion is visualization mm -hmm. out of selfish gain like we talked about. Mm -hmm. The real thing is when you call those things that be not as though they were, according yes. to the word of God, you do not ask amiss mm -hmm. and you work the law of the mind. What is that? The law of the mind means the mechanism of your thinking, the mechanism of your mind, the mechanism of your thoughts mm -hmm. is designed to be conquered by the word of God. And then you meditate on Philippians, whatever is pure, holy, just, pure, all those things of good report, dwell on these things. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, you're going to clear the mechanism and then you can start to apply faith to what you're believing for. And then you can do a vision board. You can write it out and say, I believe God is saying this, this, and this. By faith, I apply the word to this. And you meditate on it day and night according to his word, not in a selfish, carnal way that you spend it on your lust, but for him. Mm -hmm. and you're coming into partnership with him, then you can ask, pray, believe, speak mm -hmm. to the mountain. Mm -hmm. You believe you receive that, and you're going to start manifesting stuff. Mm -hmm. You do corresponding actions like sowing, reaping. You just get into this, and you start to manifest. So the law of the mind mm -hmm. is God's system of development inside the believer, any person, mm -hmm. and an act of worship is to submit that developmental incubator mm -hmm. to his word, to the process, and you can, quote unquote, manifest stuff, but now it's under the ordinances of God, mm -hmm. and now it's according to his word, and it's through that lens. Without mm -hmm. it, it, you're bordering on witchcraft. Yeah. Well, it, it says what you just said in verse 22. It says, for I delight, yes. that word delight, Yes. delight in the law of God. And of course, we have a new covenant, a better covenant. His name is Jesus. But it says, delight yourself in the Lord. That's a form of meditating. Are you, are you delighting yourself? Come on. Are you delighted in the Lord? Instead of meditating on some of these other things. That's right. When you begin to delight yourself, when you begin to meditate on the scripture, when you begin to meditate on the word of God, it is true. You will then begin to get your vision in right alignment. Your spirit will begin, your inner man will begin to align with the plans that the Lord has for you. Mm -hmm. And like you're talking about, you know, a lot of people, we all know this, you know, Habakkuk 2, 2, write the vision and make it plain. Yeah. Put it on tablets so you have a path to run That's on. That's right. That was, and, that was a big sp scripture that you used to talk about, especially when I remember being a kid and you talking about that all the time. Yeah. And that was a wonderful scripture that I was able to just meditate on. And it did, it did work. When you, when you write the vision and you make it plain, it works. It does. Especially yeah. when you stay in the, like you said, in the law, like in his word, when mm -hmm. you stay in his boundaries, instead of going beyond that mm -hmm. into 
that witchcraft stuff. Yeah. Yes. And you, you stay in his word, you, you meditate on his word, and you do it his well, way. Well, you were listening to the entire book of Matthew, like, every day. Yeah. Remember, like, you had the whole thing. Oh, my gosh, yeah. But here's, here's the point, though. Horses. Yep. Mm -hmm. The word of God's in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you thought about a thing. And it happened. You started writing. Started writing. Yeah. And then one thing led to another, and one day you ended up with five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Five horses. Yeah. Yes. And it was kind of like they fell in your lap, and we're going, I don't know how we're going to do this. And honestly, I truly believe it was the wisdom of the Lord because there, yeah. I knew kind of how to take care of horses. Yeah. <laughs> but, but then I, I really learned. And I knew I learned how to do it well because the Lord put it in my heart. He put it in my mind. Mm -hmm. I was meditating on it. Yes. And um, it, it's kind of like he gives you the tools Yeah. also yes. if you ask for them. Well, let, let me take that to another level, like mom and I and how we did things. You know, for years, people teased me. Uh -huh. Like we go walk into places. I remember when the Lord first spoke to me mm -hmm. um, about this word called, called post-sale. Yeah. Post said, "We're you and I were in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Yes, we were. And we're we're driving, and I heard this word. Mm -hmm. I actually wasn't feeling good. We're driving fast. Yes. <laughs> I'm in the back seat, and hanging onto a suitcase with my head cut on it. I'm like, I don't feel so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're whipping through the streets, and, yes. and suddenly, our Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, "I'm giving you a post sale media ministry." Yes. Yeah. And I said, "What?" And the Lord does that. Sometimes he'll tell me things. Mm -hmm. And it takes like a year or years until mm -hmm. he defines it. Yeah. So I sat up and I, our assistant was with us. You were with me, honey. And, mm -hmm. and I just said, the Holy Spirit just said, I'm giving you a post-sale media ministry. And they're like, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> and But I realized it's my name, Joseph. It means God shall add. It means things set sail on the water, so to speak. Mm -hmm. They make it halfway post-sale after they set sail mm -hmm. so they're halfway through the journey mm -hmm. and we come along because they use fuel to get out there they run out of gas we come along with sails and the wind in her sails and either help them mm -hmm. or we take them to their destination yes mm -hmm. post sale in other words they started they're kind of floundering but we get them to the destination mm -hmm. and then from there i started to think about studios mm -hmm. all the time everybody jokes they tease me yes. hey joseph what's uh what's there's a back of a van here so uh and people mimic me they'd be like you know what this could be uh you know you know it's not very big but you know, we could put a camera here and this this would be a good studio yeah it's a studio <laughs> and i would get that all yeah. the time right yeah and people tease that. me for years I remember that. yeah i remember that there was it got to a point where <laughs> i think it, we were leaving when i was leaving uh, my childhood bedroom uh -huh. and i was like i bet you're gonna turn this into a studio and you're like you bet i will oh, yeah, i'll turn it into a studio because <laughs> everything and what is that old saying to to a hammer everything's a nail but yes. but the point is is that when when i begin to see that though it's because the lord dropped a seed in me yes and that's different than some kind of selfish visualization yes, exactly like the horse yep yes. like the studio mm -hmm. the lord put that in me mm -hmm. and then i would almost almost obsess over mm -hmm. it. I'd draw pictures of it. I'd be thinking about it. I'd be, okay, we're going to do this. You know what I need? I need a building. I don't need a church. I need a building. We've got to create a broadcast center. How are we going to do this? Don't have any money. What are we going to do, Jesus? And we just started doing it. And the Lord said to me, go live every day. Mm -hmm. Be yeah. faithful with a little. Mm -hmm. Do what I've called you to do. Keep working it. And then I would imagine it. I thought, God, if I could just get one microphone. I have a microphone on the shelf back here, mm -hmm. which is the first microphone our partners ever gave us. Oh, yes. I remember. So I keep that as a, yes. a remembrance yeah. of where we came from. But it all started day. with, what's that, honey? I said, I remember that day. Uh, mm -hmm. It was wonderful. It was. And some people who are watching might have been a part of that. Mm -hmm. That must have been seven years ago, eight years yeah. ago. Yeah, but, seven or eight. But when I had that vision, now today mm -hmm. we're in a very nice studio. And it is a world broadcast studio. Mm -hmm. But this is just the beginning. And now we're in a world broadcast center. Mm -hmm. But that all started in Rio de Janeiro when the Lord said to me, post sale. Yes. The word of the Lord came. And then I began to obsess with visuals of studios, studios, studios. It's all I could think about. I had so into studios. Yeah. And now we have people visit and say, I want to see your studio. How are you doing this? Mm -hmm. And we're just getting started. This is, this is phase one. Yeah. And... You know what's wild? Mm. People are like, look at this. I'm way beyond this. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, yeah, this is great. I've already been here in my mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
now by faith, I'm thinking about the other studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And quite frankly, I'm beyond that one too. In my it's mind. So awesome. Yeah. And yeah. but it's because I believe in a world broadcast center and I want to see people touched and ministered to. And again, this is in the scope of asking, receiving. Mm-hmm. And that is the law of the mind. You put that mm-hmm. God puts a seed in or you put it in through his word and you get an image of something and then you meditate on it by faith yes. and you go to work, you speak it out, you meditate on it. And that took years. Mm-hmm. But here it is, getting paid in full. Yes. It's it's definitely it goes way over into the side of what that looks like when you're trusting the Lord versus asking amiss or so good. asking for selfish gain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's but the, well, I remember Allie with horses. Wonderful. Yeah. She'd ask all the time, can I get a horse? Can I get a horse? Mm-hmm. Yes. We're like, honey, we can't buy, we can't even buy like lunch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> can I get a horse? She's like, I want a horse. I'm like, uh, no. I, it's it's kind of <laughs> interesting because it's like I would, I would dream about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It would get to the point where the Lord was speaking to me so strongly that I didn't even, at the time, I didn't mm-hmm. know that's what that was. Mm-hmm. You know what it really started with with Allie though? Remember this, Heather? Mm. I yes, remember, I was I remember the neighbor kids would come over yeah. and she'd have a bicycle. Yeah. And she's like, you know what? I, and she, I don't even know how it came about, but you said we'd buy you a bike and then you go find a neighbor kid and you'd sew it to, you'd give it to them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They'd come over and you'd be like, Harry, you need a bike. And we're like, we just bought you that. Mm-hmm. And we didn't stop it. Yep. We didn't correct that because I thought, you know what? She's getting in God's economy at a young age. Mm-hmm. She's giving all her stuff away. But, mm-hmm. but um, that's where it started. You start sewing and visualizing and doing what you feel is right before the Lord. Yes. That's all part of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I was thinking of Psalm 84. The Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord gives grace and glory, and yes. no good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly before him. So mm-hmm. good. And when you're walking uprightly before him, you're so praying, good. you're inquiring the Lord, mm-hmm. and you're you're doing all the things you know that... Like when we talked about with Abraham, you so know, good. the Lord gives you a visual. He gives you a wisdom. He speaks to your heart. It's that quiet voice that comes to you of this. And if it repetitively keeps coming of something, you're like the Lord, but how? But I'm, I trust you. You told me, so I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stand on the word. I'm standing on what you're saying. There's no good thing that he will, hold, will withhold as you're in alignment with him as you're walking uprightly before him. Amen. So mm-hmm. good. He is your sun and your shield. How about when you were you know, on dialysis? How about when you, yeah. you know, you're believing God for things? There's several things you believe God for and there they happen, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it's what the Lord is doing through you too. You yeah. got out of sickness that way. Yeah. Begin to see yourself well. I did. I began to visualize myself as being well, you know, the scripture, I believe it's first Corinthians 13, 13, where it talks about all the gifts, but then you go further down. Yep. And this has just really been stirring in me for the last many days where... And again, by have, visualization, mm-hmm. we're not talking about the world's way of doing it. That's no. wickedness. That's, that's yeah. demonic. You're doing this like, you know, soulish comparison, the soulish right. imagination. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about getting in the Word of God. Yes. Yep. If it's in the scope of Scripture, yes. it's more meditation. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's a weird word too. Yeah. But I'm talking like meditate on the Word of God day and mm-hmm. night. Psalm 119 mm-hmm. says, I'm not talking about transcendental garbage. Right. I'm talking about meditating on the written Word of God where you think about the words yes. that are said. By the washing of the water of the word he, he ephesians washes, five washes and so really it's getting a picture in your mind mm-hmm. and thinking on it according to the word building your faith towards it and saying lord you can do anything mm-hmm. and you think on that that's yeah. where vision boards come yes and that's where so in sickness you know i i had to start with hope yes which is like a blueprint for what you're believe the very thing you're believing for yeah. until you get so good, Heather. until you've gotten the word in you so much that you get a revelation of what belongs to you yeah and you get in alignment with him you know that's why there's fasting that's why there's sowing mm-hmm. you know we don't fast to to move god we so fast good. to move our carnal self that's mm-hmm. so we good. fast to get our heart and mind in alignment and get out of carnality in Mm -hmm. alignment with what the word says. And just like with sewing, sewing is 
not because, you know, the Lord's trying to get something from you, but you say, no, I am going to take this seed, I'm going to sow it into the thing that I know that you've called me to and I'm believing for. And so it gets your heart in right alignment with, and it starts so small with believing for the smallest things. Yeah. And then once you see that come to pass and manifest, you're mm -hmm. like, whoa, it's, it's kind of like, Yes, and as you begin to grow and grow and grow, it just be that seed becomes larger and larger and larger, what you're believing for, and you build that faith that yes, we're talking about, right. mm -hmm. the stars that you're believing for, and you just begin to trust God because you've seen it happen over and over again, mm -hmm. that you're like, no, if he said it, it's done. And, you, it. and, and it, it, it's, it's going to show up. You sow a seed, you believe God, you step out in faith, that visualization of the Lord said it, so it's, it's showing up. I also think that when you, when you sow it, it's a form of also correcting your heart posture yeah. in the sense of not only, um, what's the right word? Like when we, when we sow, Mm -hmm. In the moment, it's like you're completely letting go of it and saying, no, I trust God above my finances. Mm -hmm. I trust God above my emotions. I trust God above my judgment, mm -hmm. all those things. Mm -hmm. And you get in a place of completely abandoning your own wants and needs and just saying, God, I trust you with my everything mm -hmm. and putting your heart in that place of making God your number one. Yeah. And I, th I think that is so important and to keep in mind when when you're sowing because even especially when you when you sow those big things when it means a lot to you yes yeah <laughs> and i think when it means a lot to you it means a lot to god yeah and so yeah you begin to build that track record because the lord knows what works mm -hmm. he just needs to get you there so yeah. you can trust and know that Oh no, this, this is happening. This works. It is that faith. And it is again, the law of the mind mm -hmm. where there really is a law of the mind and what you think about and, and what you meditate, meaning the word of God, it's going to produce a life when you begin to go after the things of your own personal gain. And it just, there's just something that is, it yeah. doesn't usually work out very well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And mm -hmm. so that's why it's so important to stay in the word stay in the word for real mm -hmm. make it your number one read it until it really truly becomes alive in you mm -hmm. and getting to a point where mm -hmm. you understand that this life is not ours it's it's not it's temporary yeah. i'm more so saying that this life is temporary yes when you get to a place of really understanding that at the end of the day when we stand before the lord mm -hmm. and it's not just going to be um, us and our mom, us and our dad, us and our brother, sister, whatever. But it really is going to be you and God. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's so important to know this word right now mm -hmm. and to know who he's called you to be because we're, we're getting closer to a time where um, it's becoming more and more real and, mm -hmm. and it's important to know him. It's mm -hmm. really important to know him for you, mm -hmm. not just because someone told you about him. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about really knowing Jesus on a one-on-one -on -one relationship mm -hmm. where you get to a point of reading the word. And, and the reason why, I, I found this interesting. When you read the Old Testament and you get to a place of like, when you want to know someone, you want to know their personality. You want to know what they like, what they dislike, what makes them laugh, what makes them angry. And I was getting into a place of reading the Old Testament, and I started to understand God and where he came from, his background before Jesus, and how it took us all the way to Jesus. And that's why when you, when you start taking in the word to such a level, you get in a place of understanding, oh, he's real. Oh, he's alive. Not only do I believe in him, but I know him. I, I know what makes him angry. I know what makes him laugh. Yeah. I know what makes him happy. Yes. And yeah, that definitely. So with all, taking all of that, absolutely, with taking all of that, it's you get to a place where you become so confident in the Lord because you get to know him, you get yes. to know his character, that it says, cast not away your confidence for it. It gives, it produces great reward. And when you can get in a place with what you're talking about, getting in the word mm -hmm. and finding out one, knowing about him, but then learning about yourself and what he has and his wants and his desires for you. And it really just kind of couples with how you're designed. Mm -hmm. So then you begin to step into a space of 
what you were designed for, it creates security. Mm -hmm. It creates confidence. Mm -hmm. You you have an assurance. You become fully persuaded. Yes. You're not tossed around as easily. Mm -hmm. You don't deal with all this. The enemy can't come and mess with your thoughts and mind about you know what you're doing or what you're not doing. Mm -hmm. But with that, when you know you begin to do that and you begin to not cast away your confidence, but you get to know him, mm -hmm. there is such a strength in that. Oh my gosh. There's such yeah. a fierceness in that. Mm -hmm. You become so fully persuaded. You're like, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. I know what the Lord told me. Yeah. And that was the thing with Abraham. He's like, I know what I I know what you said to me. Yeah, because he got into a place of really knowing the Lord for real. Mm -hmm. And and yeah. when lies come at you and deceit mm -hmm. comes at you, everyone telling you who you are, who you're not, and ups and downs mm -hmm. and you get to a place of, but I know who God called me. Yeah. I know I know the Lord. I, I know who he says about me. Mm -hmm. I, I know him. And especially when you get further in places when people say, uh, it's why it's so important to be rooted in the word of God, because some people sometimes say things and they mean well, but you, mm -hmm. you go back to them and say, no, but this is what God said. Yeah. And it's important to know for you so you're not persuaded mm -hmm. by agendas or lies mm -hmm. that a lot of people try so to So strong. Throw. That is so strong. Well, you guys know what you're talking about. Mm. Really enjoy it. It's really good. Man, I married the right one. Yeah. Got a pretty good kid, too. Yeah. God's awesome. Yes. You know, people are so desperate for answers. Mm -hmm. And you know what I find? What people sometimes think is faith mm -hmm. is a whole lot of struggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a lot of struggle. Yeah. And they, they, they think if I just try harder, if I pray harder, if I do this, you know, the Bible says pray without ceasing. Yes. The Bible says that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we have this thing that says, if I just really get after it, mm -hmm. God is going to answer. Yeah. yeah. And that's good. I'm not saying it's bad. It's mm -hmm. good. But there's also a part where there's a greater faith in trusting him and resting. Mm hmm. Now you got to ask, you got to stay in faith. You can't disconnect and go neutral. Yeah. You know, that's, that's sinking. But when you begin to do what the Lord's asked you to do, or you have a vision from God and you're meditating on it day and night, the word of God, you will begin to see victory, but you got to stand strong in it. Mm -hmm. You got to continue to go forward. So I'm thinking about people that are on here right now. Mm -hmm. You're watching, you know, it's Red Church. It's, it's the, the day the Lord has made. Yes, and, Sunday morning. And I just want to say to everybody, you know, maybe you're in a, a place of saying, my goodness, you know, I just, I believe in God for some things. Yeah. I believe that this is the year we give God a job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we've heard that. We've talked about it. And mm -hmm. Jesse said it. Other people have said it. Mm -hmm. But I'm just telling you, this is where we give God a job. We give God something to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying... Let's have him do the impossible. I'm believing God for the impossible. Yeah. So the thing I'm visualizing, I, I, I hate using that word. Yeah. Let's say a better word. The thing I'm believing for yes. through thinking intensely about with my, my heart mm -hmm. and my mind, meditating on the word and mm -hmm. staying on that word yeah. and then thinking about it according to the word, because I know God has said, I want this for you. Mm -hmm. You've got to begin to meditate and think on the word. I'm not talking about that weird meditation stuff sure, you're talking yeah. about, thinking about the yeah. scripture, adding your faith mm -hmm. to it yes. and saying, that's what I have. And then you speak it out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. This is what the Lord says I can have. Yeah. When you're thinking in that capacity until it becomes an image on the inside mm -hmm. and it's according to the word, that becomes faith. Faith mm -hmm. is part of that. I'm going beyond the studio. I'm now believing for property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More property. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. I'm believing that this airplane thing is going to be over with in short order. Mm -hmm. We've been believing for that for some time. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's places we got to get to. And you, you know, Heather. Yeah. Last year. Yes. We traveled so much. We were home an average of five days a month. That's right. And we did all these broadcasts in the mornings. Yes. On the road. Yeah. In the studio. Whenever yeah. we could get, you know, a bunch of cameras on the road, do it in a hotel. Mm-hmm. And we were doing this the best we could late at night, whatever. And when you get an airplane, in a simple airplane, mm -hmm. we're not talking about some, you know, 747 here. We're just talking about something yeah. affordable. Safe and, safe and affordable. Conservative. And you know, um, <laughs> one person calls them a time capsule. Mm. Because you can actually get places, preach the word, mm -hmm. 
and kind of be intact when you come back. Mm -hmm. What can take three days of a turnaround, you yes. can do in a day. Yes. With an airplane. Yeah. So I'm believing God. Mm -hmm. We've been, you know, believing that way. We, we do a form of, you know, I, I hate to use the, even the term vision boards because it sounds so weird, mm -hmm. but we put images in front of us. Yeah. We speak the word over them. Mm -hmm. We thank the Lord that if it's his will, yeah. we come into agreement with it yes. and it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those okay. things work. I'm believing it's going to work with property soon. Yes. I'm believing God for impossible properties. Amen. Yes. Absolutely. And I believe that that's a part of our partners. They believe that way. I believe God's doing that for our partners. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody watching, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Heather, would you do this? Would you stretch out your hand mm -hmm. and just begin to pray? Yes. That he who began a good work in people Thank is you, faithful Jesus. to complete it and that they begin to obtain yes. what they were thinking about. Yes. They obtain yeah. what they've been believing for. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Yes. Father, I say for the ones who have spent time. Yes. I say for the ones who have been in, in the word and the, you're, or, and the ones who are in journey or in process of being saturated by your word mm -hmm. and saturated in prayer and saturated in the presence of God and spending time with you. Lord, right now for those things right now that they would have a hope and a dream for that yes. you've placed in their Thank heart you, right, now. right now that they would begin to attach to what the word says yep. and according to by faith, Yes, by faith. Hallelujah, Amen. God, I say right now, by faith, by faith, that they would begin by to faith. call forth those things that do not exist as though they exist. And I thank name. you, Jesus. And I ask for those who, who begin to have, they need to have a plan. You need to prepare. You need to prepare. You need to plan. If he's giving you a vision, if he's giving you insight to a call and something that belongs to you, that you would begin to have strength to in the boldness to begin to believe, mm -hmm. to begin to believe in your heart, believe mm -hmm. in your heart right now to begin to hang on to those things that he's placing in your heart right now to begin to call forth those things that be not or do not exist as though they do mm -hmm. and to have a plan and to be prepared. Be prepared. I hear the Lord saying, I'm trying to get things to you and I need you in preparation. I need you to be Come prepared on. for this yep. so that you're ready in, in all the things so that as you're ready, then it, it can show up. It begins to show up and you're ready for it. You're prepared for it so that the blessing goes forth of what he has for your very life. Mm -hmm. I thank you, Jesus. I say hope arise. Hope in your heart. Yes. Begin to see how God sees you. Begin to see and hope what he's provided for you even right now, whether it be lands, resources to get a job done for the Lord, plans to just begin to go out and do the very thing that he has marked you to do. I thank you, Jesus, right now. I just release faith, mm -hmm. faith, faith, faith Jesus, begin to rise up right now in Jesus' name. You, Hope and faith mm -hmm. and believing that, yes, God, I take your word even above these other circumstances. Nope, I... I I choose to disesteem anything the enemy is trying to discourage me with. That's right. Or to use other things to discourage me. Come I just dis nope, that's not what the word says. I, I I begin to set my face like flint towards the Lord and exactly what he has called me to do. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I just speak that faith arising, mm -hmm. that ability to see, begin to see, and then begin to see. And begin to see what the Lord has for you. And not only begin to see, but you begin to talk about it. You begin to say it. You begin to praise him. You begin to worship him in advance. You begin to say, thank you, Lord. Yes. I thank you, Jesus, for thank what you are you, providing mm -hmm. and what you're calling me to. I thank you, Jesus, right thank now. You, hope and faith arise. Yes. Hope and faith arise in your heart Hope and, and faith. let the enemy of your soul scatter in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Disesteem that. Lord. 
Yes. Give it no attention. <laughs> Do not give it any space in your heart or in your mind, but rather pick up the things that the Lord is saying, come with me. Come be with me. Amen. Come be in the presence of yes, God. Yes, Lord. Come spend time with me. Boy, that's good. Come let me show you what I have for you. So good. And come into an agreement with me. He wants to be believed. Yes, yeah. Lord. He wants you to believe what he has for you, which mm -hmm. is good. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, that's, this is good. Yeah. yeah. This is church. church. Welcome to church. Let good. me look right at you here yes. today. Let me look at you. I just simply want to say to you, Jesus is Lord. He loves you so much. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're the red church. Yeah. This is it. We got people watching from all over and we're so grateful that you're here. I hope you repost this. If you're interested in participating, we're going to get better and better at doing more interactive mm -hmm. red church with you, yes. uh, being here for you. Maybe we can even work it out eventually where you can interact with us in real time, yes. you know, at a higher level. We're just working it out. Yeah. And so we're, we're just kind of a new thing that we've done over the last several months. And I believe that God's put his uh, breath on it. There's a yeah. grace on this. Yeah. So we bless you. We love you. Yes. This is Red Church. We're going red in the blood of the lamb. Mm -hmm. I encourage you to repost this. Please consider becoming a partner by going to josephz.com. Yes. And uh, we, we just look forward to that. We love you so much. And we just speak the life over you, the life of God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Tomorrow morning, yeah. we mm -hmm. got Prophecy Live. Yeah. I hope you'll join us for that. We love you. If you would, please watch what comes next. I want to thank our partners and those of you who are watching right now who have been joining us. And maybe there are some of you who might even have been on the fence about becoming a partner. I just want to encourage you, if that's something that you might be praying about or inquiring the Lord about, to maybe just go ahead and take a step. And uh, we would love to invite you as one of the, our partners and as partner family. You'll get a call every month from us. You'll receive a phone call. We pray for you. And uh, there's we have many other resources that we have where you can come together and receive prayer as well. And so if you're looking to potentially partner somewhere, Please send us. We're looking to go everywhere we can reach all around the world to get the gospel of Jesus, the good news to any and all who will hear and see and trust and know that he is Lord. So if you're looking to partner, you can go ahead and go to josephz.com. All the information is there for you to join and to sign up with us and partner up really coming together as a joint partnership to really getting the gospel around the world. Visit us at josephz.com or you can text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. We sure do love you all so much and we are so grateful for your support and your help so we can see this world one for Jesus. Are you prepared for 2024? Well, we want to do our part to ignite the roar in 2024. That's why we're hosting the Power to Stand Conference in Mesa, Arizona, February 9th and the 10th. My dear friend Rick Renner will be joining me along with Pastor Jason Anderson for two powerful days that are saturated in the presence of God. I'm telling you, this world is getting wild. This year is going to be filled with unparalleled challenges, but you're going to be filled with the faith of God to stand against what comes next. I encourage you, join us for this conference February the 9th and 10th at The Power to Stand. I promise you, your life is going to be impacted. I hope to see you there.